We would like to give a word of welcome to all who have come to the drive-in meeting this afternoon. It's good to see a good number that have come, those who have promised have came, and we appreciate your attendance, appreciate your efforts to be here, and pray that you be blessed as a result. It's the greatest blessing of all of them, see it, that even today you'd come to know the Lord Jesus Christ is your own and personal Savior. I'd like to take one reading from the Word of God, from the Gospel of Luke, <clears throat> the Gospel written by the pen of the physician <clears throat> Luke, Chapter 23, in verse 26, he writes, And as they led him away, they laid, laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Verse 32. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one in the right hand and the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. We know that God a lot of blessing to the reading of his precious word. As we survey the memories of our life, there are many places that we hold with much affection, many places that we go to by our mind's eye, possibly a place where we were born, maybe a place where we lived, a place where we grew up, a place, dear friend, that holds a special memory to ourselves. This little village holds many precious memories for me. This place, a place as a boy, we used to survey its coastline. As we've already heard, I used to work in the little shop up the road. I remember many happy memories from that time. Used to leave the town of Newton Ours on a summer's morning. The sun would have rose in that eastern sky. The rays would have shone across the village, across the loch, in all its beauty. We used to marvel at the glory and the wonder of God's great creation. But dear friend, this afternoon, I want to lift our mind and take us to a most blessed place, a precious place, a place, dear friend, that is precious to me, right outside the city wall of Jerusalem, upon a hill, as you leave the northern gate on the northern side of the city, there was a hill, a place called Calvary. There they crucified him. That place, dear friend, is precious to us, for it was there the Son of God who entered into time, who walked in sinless perfection upon this world. It was there that the Son of God suffered and bled and died that you might be saved. And when I think upon that blessed place and call to mind God's saving wondrous grace, to see one hanging on the cross for me. My heart rejoices at Calvary. I ask you, dear friend, have you ever been to Calvary? I'm not asking, have you ever been there physically? But I ask you, dear friend, have you ever, by your mind, taken your eye to Calvary to appreciate that there the Son of God dying on account of your sin? There are many here Many, probably at this very moment, are going back to their, that own, their own experience, that own time in their own life, when as a guilty sinner they got to Calvary to see the, the wonder of a Savior who died for them. Maybe I should, before I go on, tell you of that moment in my own life's experience. 
as an 18-year-old man driving home from Belfast, burning with my sin. As I left university that day, a man had handed me a Bible. As I read it, I read this verse, for when we were yet without strength, when we were yet powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. As I made my way home that day, burdened with sin, understanding I was nothing but a powerless sinner in the sight of God. For the first time in my life, I got to Calvary, the place where they crucified him. I understood of all that man had done to him. And they spat upon his blessed feet. How they put a crown of thorns upon his head. How they had scourged him. How in mockery they would cried away with him. As I drove that little car home that day it came to me. Matthew, that's not all he suffered. He suffered the judgment of God for guilty sinners. On the 14th of February 2012, about half one in the afternoon, as I turned off the Annandale embankment, Onto the Ormer Road in Belfast. As a guilty sinner, I realized, is it just that he took my place and he died for me? Dear friend, by a moment of saving faith in the Son of God who died at Calvary, I was rich and gloriously saved. I ask all my audience today, I challenge your hearts in the sight of a holy God. I ask you, dear friend, are you saved? Do you know your sins forgiven? Do you have a definite, defining, distinct moment in life when you came to understand your sins forgiven? When you came to understand that the Son of God who died at Calvary died for you, Paul would say those glorious words, the Son of God who loved me, he gave himself for me. For a few moments this afternoon, I'd like to simply think about three things that Calvary tells us. Three things that we learn when we come to Calvary. Calvary tells us of the helplessness of mankind. For dear friend, if there was ever another way that mortal man and woman and boys and girls could ever be in heaven, why, dear friend, did the Son of God have to die upon a cross at Calvary? Dear friend, there is no other way. There's no other way that you can be in heaven. It required the death of the Son of God. Calvary tells me of the helplessness of mankind. But Calvary tells me of the heart of God. What a wonder. I'm sure we'll put it again. But those... 25 glorious words of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a thrill to our heart to think of the love of God for guilty sinners. Did he ever give his Son to go to Calvary to die in our stead. It tells us of the helplessness of man. It tells us of the heart of God. But I'm thankful I can come to the village of Port of Ogie this afternoon. And I can tell you that Calvary tells me that there's hope for all. I don't care who I'm speaking to this afternoon. I don't care the depths of sin to which you have went. I'm thankful I can stand with an open Bible before me and tell you, dear friend, that the Son of God who died on Calvary's cross, he died that you might be saved. And dear friend, it's possible that today you could know your sins forgiven, could know the peace and the joy and the satisfaction that salvation alone can bring. Dear friend, if only you'd come and see one who at Calvary's cross suffered that you might be seen when we think dear friend of the helplessness of mankind we go to our village today i'm sure there's many 
if we spoke to them, they'd be relying on many different ways to get them to heaven. Possibly some, dear friend, are relying on prayers. Some, maybe, dear friend, are relying on their best efforts. Maybe they're relying on a payment that they make week upon week that'll take them to heaven. Dear friend, can I make it abundantly clear this afternoon that no effort of man, no effort of a woman, of a boy or a girl will ever attain salvation. For Calvary exposes the myth of religion that man's efforts will ever obtain a place in heaven for all eternity. Dear friend, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The prophet Isaiah could say, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Dear friend, we stand in the sight of a holy God. Dear friend, we have to take our place as a guilty, hell-deserving sinner. Dear friend, our Lord Jesus Christ could say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Dear friend, the only way that you can be in heaven, the only way that you can know your sins forgiven, it required the Son of God to leave the city walls of Jerusalem, to let men take him and kneel him by hands and feet to a wooden cross, and there he suffered for sin, not his own, for he was sinless, spotless, and pure. But dear friend, he died for your sin and for mine. It's a thrill to our heart. It lifts our heart with praise and wonder. That there he died that we might be saved. Dear friend, as we turn to Calvary, we see the heart of man revealed in all its sin. We think of how they took the sinless Son of God, and they spat upon his feet. You think of how they lifted that, that scourging rod and they brought it down upon his blessed back. Well, we read those words, I gave my back to my, the smiter, my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Dear friend, we turn to Calvary and we see what mankind done to the Son of God. And it exposes, dear friend, that we're nothing but guilty sinners. Destined for hell if we're not saved. I remember I've already told you of that day in my own life's experience. But dear friend, that day there was something that was a burden to me. It was a reality, dear friend, that I was a guilty, hell-deserving sinner that I was perishing in my sin, that I deserve to be under the judgment of God for all eternity. Dear friend, that's what I deserve. Dear friend, before a man or a woman will ever appreciate the death of Christ at Calvary, they'll come to understand their need as a sinner in the sight of God. We quote that verse again from Romans. The Bible makes it abundantly clear. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But dear friend, I'm thankful I can come to tell you, not just of your helpless position, the helplessness of mankind. I'm thankful, dear friend, I can come to this village, to this car park this afternoon to tell you something of the heart of God. But God commendeth his love toward us. In that why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What a marvel. It thrills my heart that the God of heaven loved me. He loved you. I don't know who I'm speaking to this afternoon. But can I make it abundantly clear? There may be Times in life you feel worthless, you feel helpless, you feel unlovable. Can I tell you this afternoon, the God of heaven loves you. You say to me, Matthew, how do I know? Dear friend, he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son to a manger in Bethlehem. He gave his son to this world 
and he lived for 33 years in sinless, spotless humanity. One who was sinless and pure, impossible, dear friend, for the Christ of God to sin. He lived a life of perfection. We read in the Gospels those miracles that he performed. The one who could give sight to the blind. The one who could make the lame to walk. The one who even raised the dead. God give his son. But dear friend, those words of John 3 and verse 16 mean much more. For God give his son that he might go all the way to a cross at Calvary. That he might go all the way outside that city wall. That he might let the creatures of his hand with nails bind them to that wooden cross. That he might let them uplift them between heaven and earth. And dear friend, there the blessed Son of God. He suffered, he bled, and he died that you might be saved. Who his own self bear our sin in his own body upon the tree. His the throne the throne of heaven. Yet he comes on earth to bleed, and for man his life is given. This is what declares indeed our God is love. I tell you, dear friend, the greatest display of the love of God, we turn to Calvary to see his blessed son dying on account of sin, but not his own. I ask you, dear friend, have you ever appreciated the wonder that it was for you? Have you ever understood the reality that when Christ died upon the cross, he died on account of your sin, that you might be in heaven? Have you ever, by simple saving faith in the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ, ever understood it was for me? Yes, all for me. O oh, love of God, so great, so free. A wondrous love, I'll shout and sing. He died for me, my Lord, the King. Can I tell you another time God loves you? Can I tell you that Christ died for you? Can I tell you you can be saved by faith alone? In the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. That lovely hymn that we often quote, Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul find liberty at Calvary. If there's a soul here this afternoon longing for salvation, we don't point you to a creed or to a religion. We point, don't point you to deeds of merit that you have to do. We point you to a finished work at Calvary, for the Savior could cry, it is finished. And with triumph he bowed his head. He dismissed his own spirit. He willingly entered into death. Dear friend, this afternoon we're thankful we preach a living and a glorified Savior. For the third day God raised him from the dead. There's a man in the glory, a living Savior, who bears the marks of Calvary. Dear friend, he bore them. He bore the marks. He bore the penalty of sin. Dear friend, that you might be saved. Calvary tells me of the helplessness of mankind. Calvary tells me something of the heart of God. Dear friend, we're thankful this afternoon we can come to tell you that Calvary tells me there's hope for all. Dear friend, the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary paid an ultimate price for sin in all its fullness. If God, dear friend, can come out to each and every soul, an 
and offer you, dear friend, forgiveness of your sin. I don't care the depths of sin to which you've went. I don't care, dear friend, all that you've done in your life. Maybe you have attended Sunday school all your days. You're thinking, dear friend, I'm not too bad a sinner. Maybe, dear friend, here today, you're thinking, the depths of sin to which I've went, there's no way that I could be saved. Dear friend, I'm thankful that God, our Savior, will have all men, all women, all boys and girls to be saved. Dear friend, you can be saved this afternoon. You can know your sins forgiven. For dear friend, Christ died at Calvary that you might be saved. I spoke to a woman recently. She wanted nothing to do with these things. And yet, dear friend, as we conversed generally, she looked, she spoke about the world in which we live. She spoke about the, the terrible things that are happening. She said to me, Matthew, it's like with a clenched fist, a clenched hand. I'm rubbing my hand down a blackboard, desperately trying to cling on for hope. Dear friend, the only hope that you'll ever find for eternity, it's found in Christ. Dear friend, if you want to be saved, get the Calvary to see one who there died that you might be saved. There were two men at Calvary that day. There were two thieves, two malefactors. They were there suffering the penalty for their own sin. John tells us that Jesus was in the midst. They were equal distances from the Son of God, equal opportunity. Dear friend, one of those men is in heaven. For he said, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he heard the blessed words of the Savior today. Shall thou be with me in paradise? Dear friend, there's another man. Get equal opportunities to hear. You've seen the sinless Savior die. Dear friend, there's no record of him ever trusting Christ. Can I make it abundantly clear this afternoon that what you do with the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, what you do with Jesus Christ who died at Calvary that you might be saved, Dear friend, that will determine where you will be for your all eternity. Dear friend, you can be saved. You can know your sins forgiven even this afternoon. If as a guilty sinner, you'd come to Christ. And put your faith alone in him. Put your rest alone in him. Dear friend, realize not have I gotten but what I receive, grace has bestowed it since I have believed. Boasting excluded, pride I abase. I'm only a sinner, saved by grace. May it be the cry of some this afternoon. May you come to Christ, the man who died at Calvary, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary. There they crucified him, that man of Calvary. Has won my heart from me, he died to set me free. Blessed man of Calvary, get the Christ this afternoon. Know your sins forgiven, no peace with God, assurance of heaven, a joy and a satisfaction that this world can never give. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Shall we pray? Our blessed God, we come to thee this afternoon. Thank thee for the privilege to stand in the open air and proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ. We're thankful for the one who went to Calvary and there upon that cross suffered and bled and died on account of sin. Dear friend, Father, we thank thee for a full 
and a free salvation that's available unto you all. For none need perish, all may live. For Christ has died. We pray for all that are here this afternoon. If any still in their sin, we pray that even as a result of the reading of thy precious word, that even this afternoon they would know their sins forgiven and know peace with God. We pray for our land. We pray for a nation this, this afternoon that more mourns. Pray for all who are in authority. Pray, O oh Father, that thy hand will be over all. We know thy grace and thy mercy in the days that are to come. But most of all, our heart's desire and prayer to God for all that are here today is that they might be saved. We pray for a journey of mercies as we make our way home. We ask it all in the worthy and the precious name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>